Hi everyone, let's go over my bullish and bearish elite wave scenarios on Bitcoin, starting on the weekly time frame with the bullish scenario where we're looking for a double one, two, a three, four, and looking for a wave five to the upside. Common target area for your wave four is between the 0 0.382 and the 0 0.5 Fibonacci taken from the low of two to the high of three, giving you a target area between 57.5k and 53.3k, with the invalidation being the 0 0.618 at 49.3k. If we then zoom in to this wave 4, we are looking for a sideways 3-wave corrective structure in a bigger WXY. Here we then have a wave W in a regular flat, a 3-wave A, a 3-wave B and a 5-wave C to the downside. Then we're looking for an expanding flat in wave X, a 3-wave A, 3-wave B and a 5-wave C to take the high of this wave A, after which we are going to be looking for a move to the downside in a wave Y, which most commonly is is a zigzag structure, a 535 ABC, but it can also be a flat and the least common structure is a triangle. If we then zoom into this move towards the upside, we are looking for a 5 wave structure to finish that wave C taking the highs at 67k. In this scenario, we are then looking for this structure here to be part of a wave 4 in an impulsive 1, 2, 3, 4 and a final move to the upside in a wave 5. We hit the resistance area over here, the currently white box, 65.2k to 65.8k, and retrace to support here between 63k and 63.2k. The support area below price is the 302, 62.3k, and the daily naked point of control on top of the 0 0.5, 61.7k. In this scenario, your common target area for wave 4 is the blue box to 0 0.2362, to that 0 0.5, taken from the low of 2 to the high of this wave 3, giving you a target area between 63.2k and 61.7k, with the invalidation being the 0 0.618 at 61k. After that wave 4, we are now looking for an impulse to the upside. Now inside this wave 4, we are then looking for a flat structure, 3 wave A, 3 wave B and a 5 wave C to the downside, where the most common target area for your wave C is between the two 1.618s. One of these 1.618s is taken with a trend-based fib extension from the start to the end of A to the end of wave B, giving you a target at 62.8, and the second one is a normal Fibonacci at 61.3, taken from the low of A to the high of wave B. The reason that this scenario especially is interesting is because of the final leg to the upside here. We had volume increasing as price was moving to the upside as you can see and the volume is in the final move to the upside. So if this was an impulsive end in a wave 5 then what we prefer to see is a wave 1, 2, 3 sideways 4 and a 5. One more high on lower volume. However, price instead move towards the downside, invalidating an impulsive structure to the upside, not creating a 4 and a 5 on lower volume, but instead decided to move to lower prices and take the lows over here. And just because of the highest amount of volume in the high, the probabilities do increase for this high over here to be part of a corrective structure in a potential wave B. Has to be said, however, that this wave B is quite extended, taking a trend-based or normal FIB from the start to the end of this wave A, and you can see that this wave B almost hit the 1.618, and the 1.618 is an uncommon target for a wave B, but by all means, more locally, we prefer to see price moving down just a little bit more, because we actually, first of all, didn't touch the target box, most common target box for wave C, but secondly, we also touched locally the 886 taken from the low to the high and if we are looking for this move to the downside to end a wave C and therefore a wave 4 in blue earlier looking for a wave 5 to the upside it means that for this wave 5 we're looking for a wave 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the 886 is a very rare target for a wave 2 common target for a wave B or a wave X increasing the probabilities that sooner or later these lows are going to be taken. If we then zoom out once again to the weekly time frame and look at the bearish scenario, then we have a regular flat. Here we are looking for a three-wave structure to the downside in a wave A, 
three wave move to the upside in wave B and a five wave move to the downside in wave C. A regular flat is not a very common flat pattern. The most common one is an expanding flat where the target area for your wave B is between the 1.236 and the 1.38 Fibonacci taken from the high to the low of A, giving you a target between 98K and 122K. The most common target for a regular flat wave B is the 1 to the 105, is 69k to 74.4k, and then we want to count impulsive structures to the downside where the target area for your wave C is between the 1 and the 1.236 trend base of extension taken from the high to the low of A to the high of wave B, giving you a target area between 16.5 and 11.6k, with the extension target being the 1.618 at 6.5k. Best area of support is around the golden pocket taken from the low to 69k, including confluence with the value area high of this multi-year volume profile at 9.7k, so pretty much the best support area is between 10 and 9k. On the lower time frames, we are then looking for a bigger impulsive structure to the downside as we are looking for this to be the high of your wave B and now a very big impulsive move to the downside in a wave C. In red, we then have the highest degree Elliott wave count, the 1, 2, looking for a very, very big wave 3 towards the downside. You can see that this wave 2 here hit the 886, and like I just explained, an 886 taken from the start to the end of wave 1 is rare for a wave 2, common for a wave B or a wave X, increasing the probabilities that all of the price action after is corrective, which therefore increases probabilities that sooner or later price moves towards the upside to take the double top that it left behind. After this red wave 2, we are then looking for the blue count, the finished wave 1, followed by a flat structure in wave 2 after which we want to see a bigger wave 3 to the downside. Now in this wave 2 we are then also looking for a expanding flat. 3 wave A, 3 wave B and a 5 wave C, preferably ending above the highs of wave A because if wave C does not end above the high of wave A we call it a running flat ABC and that is very rare. Finally, you also see the two red vertical lines on the chart. These are FIP times, comparing in this case with the 1.618 wave 1 in red with wave 1 in blue as the FIP time is taken from the start to the end of red wave 1 to the top of 2. Again, comparing 1 with 1 over here and preferably your second wave 1 is actually a little bit shorter in time than your first wave 1, but that is not the case as the low was made after the 1.618. With regards to this wave 2, this wave 2 in time is almost as long as the red wave 2. And that is also not preferred if the high for this potential wave C or the end of C is going to be made after the 1 to 1. It just again reduces the probabilities. And the probabilities for this scenario at the moment are not higher compared to the bullish probabilities because of the 886 here. And also the fact that this second lower degree wave 1 in blue is longer in time compared to the red wave 1. When we look at these CVD divergences locally, then at the moment there is not much going on. Price moving to the downside, we need to wait for a range to form. So if we then look at the probabilities of the different scenarios, then on the 4-hour time frame, the probabilities are higher for the bullish scenarios compared to the bearish scenarios. Same on the weekly time frame, actually. On the 1-hour time frame, the probabilities are higher. That price here is looking for a wave of 4. And then one more move towards the upside in a wave of 5 because of the highest volume being in the high over here. Of course, it does mean that we are looking for proof of support. So if price is moving to the downside, where then the 886 probabilities play out, as we then take the local low as well, entering that common target area for wave C, we want to look for proof of support, whatever that is for you, a market structure change, bullish CVD divergences, RSI, MACD, MFI, whatever it is, right? On the 15 minute time frame, the probabilities are higher to still take those lower lows, as just mentioned, because of the 886 touch. That being said, I hope that this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use, in my opinion, which is the CVD. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'd like to see you at the next one. Bye bye.